Um, last lightning talk, um, Rob Dumont will be talking about get in five minutes, possibly less five minutes than five minutes if you can manage it. We'll see. <laughs> Here's my play button. to do this a lot. I used to take snapshots of uh, my code or my websites or things like that when I was hit a milestone and I would save those or I would burn them to a DVD or a CD. And that's a very simple way to back up your code to keep a, a record of what's going on, but it doesn't really tell a story because it doesn't allow you to, uh, you, if you want to know what's changed between versions, you have to dig through it yourself. Developers need more information. They need a story. They need to know what's changed, who changed it, all that sort of thing. And this is where Git comes in. Git is a source control, uh, uh, version control software, um, and version control is all about accountability. It's all about telling a story. It's all about telling you what files have changed, who made changes, when those changes were made, how those change files differ, and hopefully why they were changed. In case you hadn't guessed, I'm doing a beginner talk for some of the people here who might not know Git. Anyway, you can think of version control kind of like a Wikipedia page. They have something like it built right in, where you can look at a record of changes to uh, an article over time. You can see who changed it. They'll often put a note in. Um, and if there's something screwed up, if a 13-year-old comes in and screws up the page, they can just roll back the, uh, the changes. So what's so great about Git? Well, the four big things are that it's free and open source, it's local and distributed, it's fast and it's secure, and it's stable and very, very popular. Um, if you want to get Git, it's being baked right into a lot of apps these days. There's a TextMate bu bundle, there's an Eclipse plugin, it's built right into Xcode, and tons of other software is starting to use this. But you can also install it on your own can also install it on your own home computer if you, uh, if you so desire. The basic workflow is that you create or clone a repository, you make your changes, you stage those changes for commit, and then you commit those changes, at which point you can go back and make more changes. And when I say stage, that's a, little, that's a weird little thing that some people don't get, so uh, think of it like a, like a restaurant. Uh, the chef doesn't bring your plates out to you as he finishes them, he puts them in a staging area. Waiter picks them all up, takes them all out to the table at the same time. So the quickie version of, of uh, how to use Git is that it uses a simple Git verb and then subject uh, uh, taxonomy. You can create a repository with the git init command, uh, which creates a little hidden folder called .git. Don't touch any of these files unless you really know what you're doing, because this is the actual Git repository. And if you mess with these files, you could screw it all up. You can also clone a repository from a folder or a URL by using the clone command. And to stage your changes for committal, you, add, you use the git add. And you can add files, folders, anything like that. Uh, has to be in that folder or further down. Um, and then you commit your changes with a simple git commit command and add a little message uh, to tell, uh, to, to uh, explain what your changes were. A few other uh, common commands are log. You can get log. You can basically see what changed uh, over the last few commits. Uh, you can compare the most recent commit to uh, older versions based on its uh, commit hash, and you can remove or move things around using these commands. Git also includes a uh, git ignore uh, capability. If you create a little file called .git ignore and put in file or or folder uh, uh, patterns, it'll you, it'll tell git ignore these no matter what. Uh, the neat thing about Git is that it allows you to branch off and merge very cheaply, so you can uh, keep your master uh, uh, line very clean. Um, and you can branch off over and over and over again. You just want to make sure you're merging back. And if you try something out, it ultimately doesn't work out. You can drop it easily. Uh, to branch something off, you create a child branch using the branch command and check it out. And uh, then you can work on your new branch. To merge it back in, you go back to the you check out the parent branch and merge it right back in. Um, you can also create tags uh, that uh, let you name a commit so that you can refer to it much easier. Uh, and they can be v1.0 or you can use an arbitrary name. Uh, Git also has the ability to uh, work, dis work in a distributed manner using the push and pull commands. And you can basically have a bunch of developers all pushing and pulling their code from a central repository, which is frequently what you want to do if you're working on a website. And if you would like to read anything else, I have a few recommendations. A List Apart has an amazing little article on getting started with Git. It's not very technical, but it's very friendly, uh, a very friendly introduction. Uh, O'Reilly has an amazing book on Git. 
and here's a bunch of other links. Now, I know that I only have 15 seconds, so you won't be able to copy all these down, but I've put them all in a bit.ly bundle here, and I'd like to thank everybody for giving me a chance to speak here.